it's just very touching. It's very touching to see people wanting to have nicer lives and wanting to share their love and their good feelings with other people. And uh, when I watch Sid's uh, beautiful, beautiful tape, I realize that that what I'll be sharing with you will be will pale in comparison to what he's able to offer and what he did offer in those in those uh, twenty minutes. And that's the beauty to me of the three principles and this whole understanding is that it doesn't matter how much what you say might pale in comparison to what it, anybody else would say. Whatever, whatever little bit we understand is going to help humanity and just the little bit that all of us in this room understand it might take humanity uh, 30 years to understand that. We've been all blessed that we've uh, jumped the boundaries of time and we've, we've, we've lived ahead of our time. You know, every uh, great discovery, there were people who lived in that discovery and the benefits of that discovery for sometimes for centuries before it became a mainstream thing. And you and I are... Uh, we're, we're, uh, we got that with regard to mental health. And I don't know anything that would be a better thing to be ahead of the curve on than mental health. You know, it's 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 a, a human experience is so puzzling because I I go through so much that I, I get so nervous when I go to talk. And at uh, one time in my life, that was uh, problematic. I felt like it's, it interfered with what I was doing. But I understand now that it's, uh, if I don't get nervous, I feel like I'm not respecting the opportunity enough. You know? I know Fritz Perls once said that, uh, that uh, fear is is misunderstood excitement. <laughs> so I am a living example of that right now, <laughs> sitting up here on this stage. What I would like to do is give you, is talk about what, what, I, what I, George Pransky, see as the most um, essential contribution that Sidney Banks made to the world and made to all of us. And I'll tell you how, how it looked to me and, and how I, I came upon what I learned for myself. Um, in in 19, 1976, I went to a lecture with the, my wife, Linda, to uh, a Sydney Banks talk up in Salt Spring Island and they were like, you know, I don't know, 25 people, maybe 30. You've seen about a quarter of them here, you know, Elsie and Chip and, 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 and Jan and uh, Krista and Bob. A lot of them happen to be at this conference. And uh, so I, I went to this talk, and I didn't really know what to expect, because it had been highly recommended to me. My partner at the time, John Enright, asked me to go. And I went into the room, and I was shocked at the level of uh, health of the people in the room. I'd never seen such a thing, because everybody seemed full of joy and full of love, and yet they were very calm, and they were just full of life. And I, and I thought, gee whiz. If I, George Pransky, had to go back to San Francisco and get 35 people at this level of mental health, I might have to go through 400,000, you know? 
to find 35 that look like this, you know. So right away I had this enormous respect for uh, Sidney Banks, even though I had never seen him, because I thought if, if the only thing that these people have in common is listening to him, then I take my hat off to him. This is, I'm, I'm intrigued. I went to the lecture, okay? And uh, Sid invited Linda and myself to go to his house. And it was, in retrospect, it was quite interesting because I was the first uh, mental health professional or semi-professional, depending on what your view is of my work. Uh, I was the first mental health professional that Sidney Banks had ever had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with. And Sidney Banks was the first non-mental health professional that had a positive impact, consistent positive impact on people's lives that I had ever met. You see, so I was very interested in how he went about things, and he was very interested on, in how I went about things. So we were both strangers in a strange land together. So we're sitting there, and we're having this conversation. It was like two different worlds. So he started off by asking me what I did with people, and I talked to him about helping them to, to get over their, their childhood problems and memories and how I helped them to get in touch with their feelings and get, and get the feelings off their chest. And I talked to him about patterns, mental patterns and habits that people have and the way to, uh, how to get over those things and communication between people and getting your dissatisfactions off your chest and all that. And, and, and he was uh, surprised by that. Because he, he, he had a ninth grade education. He'd never seen it. He didn't know what a psychologist did. He was surprised by that. And he, he, he asked me, he said to me, now, isn't that kind of difficult for the client to go through all that emotional uh, strife, stress? Uh, I said, extremely difficult, but it's a means to an end. You know, the idea is that they will go through that, and then, then at the at the end of the process, then they'll have uh, they find their happiness and they'll find their well-being. So he says to me, uh, and this is like the the kid in the emperor's new clothes. It's kind of like that story. He says, "Well, do they?" find their well-being after they go through your process? I said, what, what, what was that, what was that said? <laughs> I said, do they find their well-being when they go through that process? Well, what happened inside of George was I got shaken and upset by his question. So my mind was kind of scrambled and I, and I wasn't thinking too good. So I said, uh, who, who are you talking about? He says, your, your clients. I said, S and say it again. He says, well, <laughs> do they come out? If they go into the process, George, I understand. It's very painful. You go through it. And then they come out the other end, and you say they're happy. And I'm asking, are they happy when they go through the other end? And I said, not very often, right? <laughs> and my heart sunk, and I felt really upset. And, and, and to be honest, I was very angry at Sid because uh, I felt really bad. And at that time, I'm thinking to myself, well, I feel really bad 
there's two people in the conversation. I know I didn't make myself feel bad. It must be coming from him. So I had in my mind that there was some subliminal methodology that he was using that was somehow ending up with me feeling bad. I know it's, it's funny, but at the time it literally looked that way to me. So I got my back up and I was very insulted. I felt disrespected. I felt put down. I felt disparaged. And in my angry feeling, I said to him, well, what would you do if you were trying to help, if you were doing my job? How would you do my job? Fully expecting him to say, well, I don't know, George, I haven't had the training that you've had. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't know how to help anybody. But that's not what he said. <laughs> you know? He actually had an answer. And he said, uh, I would teach whoever I was in front of what I understood that accounted for my happiness. That's what he said. I would teach them whatever I understood that helped me to be happy, I would teach that to them. Well, that made me feel worse. I went from feeling very, very bad to feeling very, 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 very bad. And I realized at that moment that I wasn't happy. Not only wasn't I happy, but I was increasingly unhappy over the, over the years because in my mind, I was taking on more and more stress. And I was smelling the coffee of how hard life was and it was taking its toll on me, and it made me uh, old before my years. And uh, my relationship with Linda, my wife, my beautiful wife, Linda, would have had to improve considerably to be very bad. <laughs> that's, that's, how things, that's how things were between us. And the family life was kind of chaotic, and I was, my job, even though I enjoyed it, was very, very stressful. And I, I was too proud to tell Sid that I didn't have the happiness myself to teach. So I said to him, well, you know, I have colleagues who are themselves not very happy, Sid. Now, how would your method of sharing what you understood about happiness work for them if they're not happy themselves? Sid says to me, well, they would be in the wrong profession. <laughs> That's what he said. They would be in the wrong profession. So I thought, oh man, this is going from bad to worse here. You know? <laughs> because he's suggesting that I'm in the wrong profession. I spent all these years going to graduate school. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. Oh, it is great. Uh, I think I'm reliving these old days here. <laughs> this can't be good. So I was really struggling to the point that I couldn't handle it anymore. I, I was dropping so fast, my spirits, that I was frightened. And I grabbed Linda's arm and said, we got to go catch a ferry. We got to get out of here. And within 30 seconds, we were gone. There was no goodbyes, no nothing. We were just out the door. And we drove down, got in the car, and we took the ferry, and we drove down the coast of, uh, of, of, of Oregon, Washington, uh, to where we lived in San Francisco. So we're driving down the coast. And, and I'm, I'm extremely troubled. And I start 
venting my bad feelings. And I'm saying, this guy has a ninth grade education and he's telling me about psychology and I have a degrees and he's putting down a field that's been existing for 50 years. He's never read a psychology book in his life. The man is a charlatan. He doesn't have a clue. And Linda says, well, George, what are you so upset about? Why don't you just ignore what, he, what he, he's saying? Good, Lord knows you ignore what I say often <laughs> enough. You know? Why don't you just ignore it? And I said, no, I'm not going to ignore what you just said. That's brilliant. I'm going to forget about it. it. It was a mistake. We shouldn't have gone up there. It was a waste of time. Uh, I don't know what's going on up there, but some crazy thing's going on. But it's, he doesn't know what he's talking about. So Linda says, good. Because frankly, I was getting tired of all your ranting and raving about what he, his qualifications, you know. So I'm sitting in the car, and I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there. And all of a sudden, I said to her, I can't ignore it. It's too ridiculous to ignore. <laughs> and she says to me, well, if you can't ignore it, then it must have resonated with you in some way. Well, all of a sudden, I felt a profound peace that I had never felt in my entire life. I, I don't even remember feeling that as a young child. I just felt peaceful. And I looked out the window. I thought, oh, where'd that scenery come from? <laughs> that's beautiful. Man, that's, that's beautiful. And I looked over at Linda. And I said, oh, what a wonderful woman she is. And that, our relationship turned around in that moment. It got continuously better for, I don't know, 30 years or something like that. Uh, it, uh, it was a different world I was living in. It was like I was airlifted. Came down, picked me up, brought me up here. Okay? Now, it wasn't a better mood. Right? It wasn't Oh, I feel better. And the reason I say that is because it was all ships rise with the tide. The level change in me was all ships rising with the tide. I saw different. I felt different. I was living a new life. Everything was different. Some things were a little different. Some things were a lot different. Everything was different. When I back, went back to San Francisco, I saw people differently. I saw the way couples interacted differently. I saw it with more wisdom, with more understanding. I, I, it slowed down. San Francisco slowed down. It wasn't as frantic and frenetic as it was when, when I went to Salt Spring. It slowed down. Uh, it was... It was a different world. Now, the way I would, what I would call that, which I got from Sidney Banks, and which he mentioned in his uh, the, the um, recording you just saw, I had jumped to a higher level of conscious state. I had jumped to a higher level of consciousness, and that was my new normal. Okay, that was um, uh, my benchmark, if you will, or I don't know what the right word is, but that was where I was, at my new level of understanding that I was living at. And my, when I went back to my old, old, you know, feelings and thoughts, I thought, oh, these are messed up. 
right? I'm in a bad place now. See what I mean? Before I was in a normal place. I was smelling the coffee. Now, that same experience was, oh wow, what's going on here? Now, levels of consciousness above me, I would go to sometimes, you know, with a really high mood or something. But that didn't look realistic to me. That wasn't real life. This was real life here, see? And then the lower level was sub-life. So this is what, what I'm going to refer to, which Sid, is Sid's terms, not mine, as level of conscious state. Now, here's where we go into, into a different gear, OK? So what I'm going to try to get across to you now uh, is going to be um, difficult, OK? And, and a lot of the things that are the most useful are the most difficult to get across. If you're a teacher, you'll understand that if you're a practitioner. So you're going to have to bear with me and kind of give me the benefit of the doubt on this. Oh, sorry. Oops. <laughs> I told you it was difficult, didn't I? <laughs> All right, we already... You already ran into two difficulties. <laughs> and there's uh, seven people trying to clean up the mess. OK, thank you. And I, I, know you, I, know, I know you can't see anything that I write, but I'm just going to do a graphic up here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that this is, that I made a jump like this, all right? My level of consciousness went from here to here, OK? Now, Sidney Banks, when he, has a, when he had his, his uh, experience, I don't really have room on the chart to describe it, but he went, say, to here, because the chart is, is not enough room. Now, the difference is, when Sidney Banks had this jump in his level of conscious state, his jump was, was high enough or was big enough that he saw behind the curtain. You see, he saw behind the curtain of life to where it was all coming from. And in his words, he would say, just for a brief instant, I saw mind, I saw God, I saw source, just for a brief instant, you see? And that, in his presentation just now, he called that an awakening. An awakening is seeing before the fact of life, before thought, before time, before space, before matter. So he got to peek behind the curtain, okay? I didn't have a high enough jump to peek behind the curtain. So I was relegated to a much nicer life. I had, a, I had to settle for that. And I also understood that this happened to me the same way Sid Banks understood that this happened to him. He understood that. And this is a whole nother dimension to life. This is a whole nother understanding of the human experience. This is a profound discovery what I'll call, just for the sake of just calling it something, uh, a horizontal dimension to life. That suddenly someone, out of the blue, could go to a higher level of 
understanding, a high level of functioning. And all ships rise with the tide, and they have essentially a new life. They're living their life again at a higher level on a go-forward basis. Are you with me on this? Now, prior to Sidney Banks' discovery of a vertical dimension, it was all horizontal. It was all what you're aware of, your, your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors. And the 400 therapies that existed attempted to help you to improve all of these. So if you wanted to have a nicer life, they'd say, well, we'll work on your memories. Now we'll work on your thoughts. Now, that's the way it was. It was a horizontal world back then, where, where people, through their willpower and through awareness and through uh, uh, programs and reprogramming, and, 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 and psychotherapy, you wanted to improve something along this continuum. And because all there was was a horizontal dimension, a person would say, well, the question is, should I live in the suffering that I'm doing now, or should I try to do something about it? Okay, you with me on this? Okay, that was the world before Sidney Banks. It was horizontal. It's the world I was, John Enright and I, we were at the very top end of horizontal improvement. <laughs> you know, we fancied ourselves the best horizontal improvers in America, you know, because we didn't know anything else, okay? And it didn't take working with people long enough to realize that horizontal improvement was very much diminishing returns. You were working against yourself because as people got more aware of themselves, they became more self-conscious. And that was not working to their, to their benefit. So along comes Sidney Banks. He has his experience and he says, I'm, I'm I'm making this up, of course, because, but you could see this in his CDs. He says, you know, this jump from where I was before I had my experience on Salt Spring Island to the life I have now, where I'm talking with psychologists and psychiatrists, I absolutely love my wife and my life and my, my world. Uh, I'm able to talk with, I used to be self-conscious, now I talk without, without even thinking about what I'm talking about. People are coming to listen to me because they see that I found something. All of this happened in an instant, and I had nothing to do with it. Here, I had everything to do with it. Here, I had nothing to do with it. I wasn't looking for it. I didn't prepare for it. I wasn't even interested in it. But it happened. Okay? So while, while this is an awareness continuum right here, where the coin of the realm is awareness, this is consciousness, a raise in consciousness. Where this is about me, George Pransky, G. Pransky, as I like to call myself. <laughs> all right? This is all about me, G. Pransky. This is all about being a human being. What is the nature of life as a human being? Not George Pransky, human beings. What's going on for human beings? What's going on inside of their thoughts, inside of their minds? So this is a, a learning about the nature of the human experience. And this is learning about G. Pransky. 
you see? So Sid saw something in the human potential, something in the nature of the human experience where we can jump to a higher levels of consciousness. And he says, if, particularly if you listen to his earlier, earlier tapes, that's how we develop as human beings. That's how we mature. That's how we change, is through this change in level of conscious state. He also said in this CD, uh, in this you know, DVD that you watched, that's the only way society is going to change. You can't change the world. You can't, you can't change something here because this is all held together. If this, instead of being G. Pransky, this is the world, you can't change one thing. You can't, you know, get rid of the death penalty. You can't uh, help poverty because it's all held together. There's whatever level society is at, what you're seeing is what that level looks like manifested in the world, this level of consciousness. But if you raise the level of consciousness, all boats rise with the tide and everything improves. Less poverty, more, more love, more uh, compassion, more everything. The, the level of consciousness raises. You see, and Sid Banks realized that this is the hope. This is the hope for the world, this is the hope for the individual. Or to put it more you know, down to earth terms, this is where our bread is buttered. Okay, you with me so far? Okay, I'm going to go a little bit further here. That's why I have the two boards. This is a little bit more high tech than your other lectures <laughs> that, have, that you've seen here. A little, just a little bit more, more high tech. So, Sid had this vertical jump, and George Pransky had his mini vertical jump. From his vertical jump, from this level that he was at, there were certain things, insights he had, certain understandings. And you know what that is? The principles of mind, consciousness, and thought. That was a byproduct of this jump. You see? The same way that Whatever I say to you in my seminars, or if you, you know, go to one of my programs and I share my understanding of life, and that's a byproduct of my jump. It's a byproduct. You see? Everybody, everybody that's really into the principles really been touched by the principles, has had a defining moment, has had a jump in their level of conscious state on a go-forward basis, everybody. And they teach the thoughts that they have at that level. If you don't have that jump, this is just a bunch of good ideas. You see, it's bull. I don't want to uh, offend anybody with bad language. It's bull, okay? You know how you, your clients will say, oh, well, I see it intellectually. They haven't made the jump. The jump is what matters. When you make the jump, this becomes real. You actualize it. You realize it. You see? Now, I'm saying this because, in my view, 
it's very easy for people to teach the principles to go over here and teach the byproducts. And it's, it's gotten so they go, I don't want to fall off the stage here. I've already done enough damage up here. It's going in this direction, in my opinion. People think, well, you can just start here and just go keep going, show applications and implications and examples and all this. It, it doesn't connect with human beings as real to them unless they have a jump in their level of conscious state. If they have a jump in their level of conscious state, they will have their own version of the principles, their own understanding of the principles, their own understanding of relationships, their own understanding of their own feelings. If they don't have that jump in level of conscious state, they're just going to have a bunch of ideas, which is kind of the booby prize. You know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't help anybody. Okay, it might be entertaining, but it doesn't help anybody. Now, you'll notice, like, if you come from this, if you come from an elevation in your level of conscious state, if you come from there, and you teach what you see from there, the idea is what you see will open a person up to this vertical dimension. To open it up to that possibility. Because that's what's natural to people. You know, all of us, when we look back at high school, we say, oh man, I wish I went through high school with what I know right now. Believe me, it would have been a much better deal. Well, it's true because your consciousness has risen since high school, just naturally, okay? So if you went back, it would be a whole different world. You'd see social pressure difference, you'd see how you approach your study, everything would be different. So people naturally do that. There's a, a natural of doing that. Now, statistically, the people who go to someone that teaches the principles and is grounded in the principles, statistically, they are statistically more likely to have a jump in level of conscious state than the control group. Okay? So there's something about pointing to the possibility, pointing to the fact that this jump in, in conscious state has nothing to do with improving your income or anything like that. It just has to do with thought. And you're... And it doesn't have to do with what you think. It has to do with your relationship to your thinking, the fact, understanding the fact that you think. So this is all about what you think, and this is all about your relationship to your thinking. So when we teach people the principles, and they understand the possibility of a rise in their level of conscious state, then they see what they need to see. They have the insight that they need to have. That's why Sid Banks, what happened to Sid Banks? Not that it's Sid Banks, but what happened to Sidney Banks is the very heart, it's the very foundation, it's the very essence of this understanding. It's where the juice is. Okay? And the principles help to explain this phenomenon, this vertical dimension. The principles help to explain that, which is wonderful because that gets people more understanding of this. Okay? But the foundation of it is here. So if you, if down the road, people forget that the foundation is here and you don't see people listening to Sidney's CDs and watching his DVDs 
reading his books, is they forget that the heart of it is the fact that Sid had that experience. He discovered that that experience is a part of life. It's, a natu it's the natural way that we evolve. Then people are just going to get lost in the, in the byproduct. Does that make sense to people? You know, I, um, I hate to say this, but my watch stopped. <laughs> you know? So, uh, Margot, is Margot here? Yeah, how am I doing for time? How much time do I have? Oh, I was, I was a half hour over? Yeah. Okay. So I, I can talk a little more then. Is that good? Yeah. I just want to get my time, Margo, that's all. Um, so I wanted to say one more thing before we go. To me, this is the spiritual part, or points to the spiritual part of this understanding. You've heard people talk about going deeper and spiritual, because it's completely, this vertical dimension is, is a mystery. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. Nobody can make it happen. Nobody can say, I think tomorrow I'll go up uh, maybe three, <laughs> maybe four levels of consciousness. I'm going to put that in my, uh, in my in my book, so I remember to do that. You, 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 can't, you can't do this, but yet it will happen to you. It happens to people who have no idea about the principles, okay? It's not something you do. We have no idea wh why it happens, when it happens. When we're with clients, we're always surprised that their level goes up. We have no idea what we said or what it had to do with. Okay, so it's a mystery, and that's why it's not as a, it's kind of annoying to us human beings, because here we have a lot to do with that. It's all willpower. Here we really have nothing to do with. There's forces beyond our control. There's forces, there's deeper forces at work. You know that expression, the Lord works in mysterious ways? Well, this is the Lord works in mysterious ways. And this, and this, and this, this spiritual dimension is something that you, you see as a possibility, you understand it, and then whatever happens, happens. But I think, in closing, that it's an unbelievable thing that a human being has built into the human experience the potential to rise to a whole nother life without having to make that happen themselves. And that's what Sidney Banks introduced to the world. The psychology now has a vertical dimension. And you and I are living in that psychology that has a vertical dimension before it becomes mainstream. You know, so I'd like to thank you all for... for